You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 24th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the iBleach division of Joe Barton's Congressional Campaign Committee, it's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, darling. Yeah, I think I'm sorry I didn't buy stock in eye bleach before oh, those God. photos came out. Oh God. It was speaking of eye bleach. <laughs> yes. Our, our good friend Tangrain wants to remind us that he was the one who invented the phrase Crocs are the sweatpants of shoes. So remember, don't buy Crocs. Avoid wearing Crocs. Friends don't let wear friends don't let friends wear Crocs. Uh-huh. Hey man, don't wear those shoes. Brought to you by Croc Blockers. Croc Blockers are one of our many, many legions legion of uh, imaginary sponsors this uh, this mm-hmm. beautiful Thanksgiving. And they work. Croc blockers work. They, they you do. Will, you will remember to never wear Crocs if you've got your Croc blockers. Get your Croc blockers. Oh. We have lots of imaginary sponsors, but they're taking the day off because they had way too much uh, turkey and stuffings. So they're all yep. asleep now. <laughs> We're coming to you Friday, uh, the day after Halloween, which is leftover day. Which Thanksgiving. Is a, a day. <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah. not Halloween. I'm sorry. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I've had way too much turkey today, and we like to emphasize the left part of leftover. So this is this is the extreme leftover day, uh, brought to you again by Crock Blockers. And in our no- we usually do a lot of research and analysis and <laughs> some DNA testing and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, CSI testing. shit. Yeah, yeah. We're out there with with fi- uh, uh, fingerprint dust and and uh, DNA type testing and so on and so forth. Today, our notes are very much like the the uh, script pages for Chevy Chase during <laughs> SNL, which yeah. is just page after page of Chevy being funny. That's yep. all it said. It just saved a lot of time in the writer's room. Said, Let him go be funny. So today, we have no notes at all. Mork and Mindy also. Robin Williams and Mork and Mil- Mindy had a page. You know, Mork does his own thing. Yeah. 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 So this is so. just... Uh, well, yeah. I just wrote down, I'm going to talk about something, and then you're going to talk about something. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving weekend, and yeah. we are uh, a house with many kids in it. Yes, uh, we more are. More kids arriving this yes, evening. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, the, the basement sleepovers have resumed for Junior Dude, and he has some new video games that came out this month. So uh, he's going to be killing Nazis with several other Nazi killers in our basement. Oh, and today uh, was um, teaching middle child to drive day. Oh, my gosh. How did that go? So I aged many years. <laughs> Many, many years. You had her out on the actual road. I did. I did. I I I could just watch the years roll by on the odometer as we went. (laughs) It was it was it was fine. She's 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 gonna be a fine driver. It's going to be just fine. Well the thing that I find hilarious, everybody knows that you're six foot eight. Yes, I am. And Middle child who is 15 and beautiful. Anyone who's seen her picture on the fa- our Facebook page knows she is a gorgeous, gorgeous child. But she's the shortest person in our family. And True. she's going to be petite for the rest yes. of her life. And I just imagine the seat adjustment that must need yes. to be done to go from you driving the van to her driving the van. It must be just a massive extreme there quite, thing. There were yeah. quite a bit of that. Yes. Extremes was, on both sides, if you yeah. will. <laughs> yeah. It was um it was quite the adjustment. Yeah. And uh and I, I decided to take her to uh the most hectic Black Friday mall in the tri state oh, area. And just say, uh, look, I'm just gonna go to sleep over here <laughs> and you just get us home. <laughs> your only your only directive is get us home. Oh and Lord. No I didn't. I took her you to didn't. a nice empty parking lot. Good. And, Good. Because um, I think this is only her second time out. Or it something is. third, something like that. And it was yeah. her first time out on the road, and she's she'll be a, she'll be a fine driver. She sure will be she a will. Fine sure she will. Yeah, they the the kids do know that there are points in time when mm-hmm. being a rebel and being an artist and being outside the box is really fantastic, yeah. and yeah. that the rest of the time being inside the box is is extremely important, and you need stay to in the box, <laughs> safe and reliable, and ex- do what people expect of you, and mm-hmm. and I've I've raised them that way that. There yes. really are times when you are supposed to let go and be creative. And, mm-hmm. you know, they have a lot of opportunity for that in this house. And then there are times when, no, there. this is when discipline kicks in. This is when rules actually matter. Yep. yep. And I, I, remember, I remember that. I mean, this is going off 
on tangents, but I did sit them Honey, down. We have really carefully scripted. <laughs> I know. Notes, okay? Stay with this the script. This kind of freeform <laughs> bullshit is just going to ruin this podcast, and our our sound editor will never forgive us yeah, for this. I I sat down with them when they were young, and this was right after the divorce, and we were in this house, and I sat them down, and I said. You know, there you don't have chores. You don't have a whole. Uh, we don't have this kind of strict routine where you have to do things. But here's what we do have to do: you have to get your homework done. We have to be at school on time. We have to go to church on Sunday. Those are the rules. <laughs> you know, and yeah. beyond that, uh, you know, don't bother the neighbors or you know, scream yeah, outside too loud. We're responsible for other people, we, you know, and how they feel about us, but uh, in terms of your behavior outside. But other than that, I, I'm well, a I very laid back, hippie mom. And that's... I can I can see a direct correlation between, because I taught them all to ride bikes too. Yes, you did. That's right. It's, it's very similar to, okay, mm-hmm. safety first, safety second, safety third. Right. We're going to ride right. around the block. We're all going to wear helmets. We're going to do this. And there are, here are the reasons why we're doing this. And mm-hmm. you don't need to like them or hate them or whatever, but there really are reasons to this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as we ride around, remember to point out people who aren't doing this and look at them and go, why aren't they doing that? What's wrong with the way they're doing it? You don't need to do it loud. You don't need to do it. Yeah. But you yeah. do need to do it. And, and youngest child, this is, you know, the, the thing that cracks me up is that at least two of these three uh, young people don't realize that they've been raised. Yep. yep. Are completely, out of, no, you, you do nothing. There's no... I, I don't get it. And it's hilarious to look at them um, take shape within the universe you have created for them. Thank you. Thank Completely you. unaware of the shape of the universe or, as we say, the water in which they swim. The water in which they swim. Um, yeah. Youngest child uh, um, who does have trouble getting up every now and then. Uh-huh. Very much like me an hour ago. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, I'm taking a nap. Uh-huh. Podcast. Oh, God. Okay. Crap. <laughs> um but she she <clears throat> informed me that she can't be late for school anymore. Oh, because I did say you know every time we uh, take her to, I take her to school and it's like we're running. Are you sure it's okay? Oh yeah, it's fine to come in. It's, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fine. She said uh, I can't be late to school anymore. Yeah. And I, I we talked a little bit about strategies for how to avoid that. She goes, No, I just have to get up on time. Wow. <laughs> Not like her. If there's no some weird. There's no alien yeah. you know intervention. Yeah. There's no conspiracy. Yeah. It's I take responsibility for this. I know what the rules are. I know what the consequences are. And I just have to do better. So I'll just do better. Yep. So yep. that's yeah. maturity. I can, yeah. I can and see they your do, hand. But they do that. Two, two out of the three, the two younger mm-hmm. ones in particular, will tell their friends, we have zero rules at home. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. you and I look at one another, as you said, it is the water in which they swim. There is such a standard of behavior in this house yes. that is unspoken. Mm-hmm. My children will never smoke. Nope. They just they it, they would not occur to them nope. to put a cigarette in their mouth. <laughs> they they will never do that. They will never do dangerous drugs. They will never drink to excess. I can honestly say they will never drink to excess. I've even asked Junior Dude about that. You know, oh yeah, I had a beer or two. I did. I did it. I did it. And you realize he knows that mom is has a standard at which he has to. <laughs> He has to live, yeah. you know. Yes. And he feels, and he he feels it. Yeah, he feels it. He feels it. So, uh, I I am very grateful for the uh, clapback that the Daily Caller has gotten for publishing pictures of you know college freshman Molly Obama. Right. Then no. Uh, come on, just clickbait and they're assholes, and that's all I have to say about. Well, that. And let me let me uh, just say this is <laughs> this, this will play into our larger theme today, whatever the hell that might turn out to be <laughs> <Yeah>. retroactively. <laughs> Um, it's going to turn out to be why or oh, why does David Brooks have a job and yeah. other things. But yeah. here's the thing. We go to a dirty hippie church mm-hmm. yeah. or at least it has a, a huge dirty hippie faction. And right. we know the people who are like dirty liberals there and hate America and, <laughs> and we're friends with them all and they're friends with us. We are not atypical. Yeah. This, you know, the, the idea that um, we have a, a family full of rebels mm-hmm. and yeah. – um, questers and artists and people who talk politics around the table and have really definite informed opinions about it and have and also are deeply moral and deeply responsible for their actions and go to church and don't really have to be like dragged there mostly. Right. right. Um, and who are going to school and getting good grades and learning life's lessons and, and on their way to being really decent human beings, and good citizens. Mm-hmm. This is pretty normal. 
this kind of environment, and this is what strikes me as so depressing and hilarious and weird, is because you and I don't live in New York or L.A. or D.C., we don't exist. Yeah, yeah. And this, and the idea that no, we can participate in the in the larger national conversation, precisely because this kind of household is really quite common. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you would just cross the fucking Hudson River or the Potomac or Nevada and come out here, we could show you that this is pretty typical. This is we're pretty typical people living in a, you know, we have, we both, you know, like have, have lots of books in our house and we like to read and we're a little bit abnormal in lots of other ways, but the basics of raising people, raising good kids who are respectful of other people who avoid doing destructive things, who think things through, isn't that sort of what you want? Yep. But and I, th I think it has more to do, the fact that we don't exist has more to do with um, the mainstream Beltway coastal news industry. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure of it. Deciding yeah. that that doesn't get eyeballs. That you just don't, yeah. Seeing people like that doesn't get eyeballs. So. But, oh. But they, they opine endlessly about where we live. Mm -hmm. They send they send in expeditions out here into the into the tall corn. Well, they, to 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 talk to people who say, uh, if Jesus got down off the cross and said something to me, I'd have to check it with Donald Trump because right. that gets eyeballs and that gets links and that gets you know linked all over the internet and that is the currency that they want to gather, not right. currency in what is normal. So I. Th think uh, they are prepping um, the the field in a way for a big dramatic thing in 2018 right now if uh -huh. if they were paying attention in a way to what is really happening day to day to day and really putting ears to the ground to find out how politics is working they would be paying attention to women over and over and over again yes, and going and saying oh look there's 30 women on the phone. This woman, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there was an article online yesterday. I didn't see it anywhere else where women primarily in Michigan, uh, with no financing, no national, uh, backing of any sort, no Soros money, got enough signatures to challenge redistricting in Michigan. And it was just, no, we went out, we decided this was terrible and we decided to gather signatures. We didn't have to buy signatures or, you know, hire massive quantities of people to go door to door. We just went and did it. Uh -huh. And people power. Hey, you know, it is possible if you're motivated and uh, want to see change. And they, you know, in Virginia, they did it the same way with getting paper ballots. There were enough people, I'm sure in the le in the legislature as well, uh, to say, no, we want, we're tired of this not knowing who won an election because the machines are corrupt or right. corruptible. We want paper ballots with a paper trail and we're going to get it. And we are going to overthrow uh, Citizens United the same way because it's not going to happen in Washington. It's not going to happen with the DSCC or the, no. you know, DCCC or the Republican counterparts. They're all making money off of the way this system is millions and millions of dollars. They're not going to cut that off. But that is one way that conserv that is i think really the way that conservatives and liberals can get together i the people that i have talked to on twitter when i bring that up there are boots on the ground in the conservative world who really do want to drain the swamp they really feel that something is wrong in washington in terms of money and corruption and they want the money out of politics sure and that's i am more than willing to walk side by side with someone that i agree about nothing uh and and work on that issue that's great. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Junior Dude. First of all, he's back from college, and he <laughs> he called me this week to tell me that uh, you know you know how how boys freshman boys call their moms every once in a while, right? Sure. I need yeah. money. Uh, I'm out of laundry soap. Um, I uh, need money. <laughs> uh, text Junior me did, some underwear. Text yeah. me some clean underwear. Yes. I. Uh, my son wanted to tell me that Mugabe had had resigned from the yes. presidency. I've been driven from power. Yes, <laughs> isn't that great news? Mom, Mom. Well, I got to tell you something. <laughs> and uh, some of you know that he has uh, a little bit of autism, and uh, he he thinks in timelines. He always thinks in timelines. And he said, "I didn't think I would 
I would hear those words until I was 30. And I, I thought, well, but isn't Mugabe like 90? He's said, oh, no, he's 93. That's right. He's 93. He'd probably be dead by the time I was 30. And he sort of, he sort of had to put all of that together. But he was terribly excited by this, uh, pe- again, people-powered democracy, uh, another velvet revolution. It just happens to be happening in Africa where uh, there are white people and black people dancing in the streets. Uh, The person that he had kicked out of the country and had been in exile came back and uh, Junior Dude had a whole uh, story to tell me about. Mugabe had said something about we're going to crush the head of the snake, meaning his opponents. Uh-huh. And the when the opponent, his vice president who had challenged him and then had to leave the country, came back and said something to the effect of, uh, "I wonder how that snake's head feels now." <laughs> you know, I mean, it was it was just sort of a back and forth about snake heads. Uh, Junior dude thought that was hilarious. And uh, he just watched several videos of dancing in the streets because a corrupt person uh, who is long overdue to be removed from office was removed from office in a nonviolent way. And I pray for that for our country, I told Junior Dude. Mm -hmm. Um, And I pray for that dancing in the streets. I'm still knitting pussy hats because I am expecting we are going to march in January again. Yep. And I am expecting that we're going to need to wear them when it's time to celebrate that Donald Trump is out of, and his whole cabal is out of office. Now, hey, well, can I just offer one little um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, slice of lemon on the side of that? All right. Which is, I would be happy to work with anyone mm-hmm. who wants to get money out of politics. Right. And who wants to draw districts fairly mm-hmm. and register people to vote and make sure everyone yeah. who can vote does vote. Right. Uh, every one of those things is against the interest of the Republican Party. Absolutely. So I can't imagine a Republican person actually wanting to do I could I, I know that uh, everybody I talk, every Republican I know wants term limits. Because <laughs> yeah. term limits means if you know how things work and can be effective yeah. as a legislator, you're gone. Right. And, and so you're gonna the, have to depend on the Koch brothers and Alec to write your legislation to tell you, you, which they to, already do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the idea yeah. that you would not support getting rid of dark money, but you right. would support automatically firing people yeah. uh, once yeah. they have served a certain number of years tells me everything I need to know about your agenda. Mm-hmm. The second problem I have, and this is a much larger one and a, and a deeper one, and it's not going away anytime soon, and there's no amount of prayer that's going to make it go away. Mm-hmm. I don't believe there's any amount of public education that's going to make it go away. We're in a very dangerous moment um, where liberals, I'm, I'm saying this very advisedly, uh, liberals and minorities and um, women, broadly speaking, are to the Republican Party as the Jews and the gypsies and the gays and the uh, intellectuals were to the Nazi party. Mm -hmm. Um, They really think that every one of their problems has been caused deliberately on purpose by a massive conspiracy between you and me, blue gal. Mm -hmm. And, and this goes back and and they're, it's deep in, it's down in their bones. Mm -hmm. They really believe this. And I just pulled up a, uh, a this week with George Stephanopoulos thing that I wrote Jesus, back in uh, it was ten years ago, mm-hmm. two thousand seven, and 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 the guest was of course Newt, Newton Leroy Gingrich. Yeah, yeah. And Newt Gingrich blamed liberals for Columbine. Yes. Blamed liberals for Littleton. And yep. Newt Gingrich will go on any show, any time, anywhere, and explain that no, 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 everything, all the horrible things you see, all the mass shootings you see, all the destruction in our politics that you see, all of the hatred, all the division, it's all liberals. They did it. They do it on purpose. They destroyed our culture. They destroyed this nation. They destroyed everything that's great about America. They are personally and explicitly responsible for a woman, a woman murdering her children. Yeah. That was that was because of that was because of the dirty, dirty liberals. What well, you, and what if you, you look up, if you just Google the words in quotation marks, Newt Gingrich blames. Yeah. You will find headline after headline. He finds the the terrible emotional trauma that happened, whether it's Columbine or whether it's a woman killing her kids, and he finds a way either to blame the current Democratic president, liberalism, or loose morals of the left. Right. Period. And and that's how he get he stays newsworthy. Mm-hmm. Is people he he has this he knows the secret, mm-hmm. which is the Sunday shows want to cover Columbine. They want to cover those things because. People want to talk about these gut wrenching events, and he gets a. That's why he always. It that is the secret. That's why he always gets a seat at the table. 
Right. Because he's willing to say, yes, I will talk about this in complete sentences. I will talk about it in sound bites. I know when you're going to go to commercial. I will have the right makeup and suit on. And uh, I will then pursue my agenda by blaming the other side for Mm -hmm. whatever happened. And if you if you look up those three words, Newt Gingrich blames, there's a lot of results. Yeah, there is. Because he's and, been and, doing this for 20 years. And now, well, 25, yeah, more yeah, than that. Yeah. And, but multiply Newt Gingrich by hundreds mm-hmm. across every domain of public interaction. Yeah, he's the one that taught them how to do this. Yes, yes, yeah. and it's yeah. all and it's always be closing. It's always mm-hmm. remember, no matter what the tragedy is, no matter what the headline is, it's always liberals who did it. Mm-hmm. It's the dirty, dirty liberals. It's the conspiracy. It's the international Jewish bankers. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. who, who are secretly conspiring with brown people to ruin your life. He is at he's running. And it's not, and the thing is, it's not him anymore. It's yeah. all of them. This is the Republican Party line. Strip away everything else. Take away all the well-intentioned this. And, you know, I can work with you on that, on, on dark money. You get you strip it all away. They really the hardcore of the Republican Party truly believes that the reason their lives are miserable is because of a dark and terrible conspiracy among people like you and me mm-hmm. to make it that way on purpose. And there's nothing on this fucking earth that's going to convince them otherwise. They're going to well, keep and this is into- why Donald Trump can tweet today about the tragedy in Egypt. Right. And make it about his Mexico wall. Right. And his followers will follow that quote unquote logic right down the road because yeah. building a wall with Mexico, every, it, while, while liberal Twitter scratches their head and says, really, building a wall in Mexico is going to fix what's going on in Egypt? Really? Uh, no, the whole the whole point is we must fight on every front. <laughs> right. And the bad thing that and and. If it is over, if it is in on the African continent, it might as well be on Mars. By the way, right. for these right. folks, Zimbabwe and Egypt are just might as well be Pluto. You know, is it a planet? Is it not? I don't know. Those part that part of the world is just a blurry foreign mass. And, but build a wall. <laughs> that and yet, makes sense. That's the fix, right? And yet, every inbred hick. In every fucking double wide in sister fuck Arkansas, <laughs> listening to Rush Limbaugh and yeah. watching Fox News has a very, very clear opinion about mm-hmm. what's wrong there, who's to blame, and what to do about it. And, it is, of and which, it is Obama. All of which are wrong. <laughs> right? Every last bit of it is wrong. Yep. And yep. and this this the descent of the right into absolute fascist, racist uh, sewerdom. Mm-hmm. It, it, the, the conversion of the party of Lincoln into a shit pile of horrible people with destructive ideas that are all interlinked and interrelated was probably going to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The thing that made it took it from being a, a persistent, chronic um, um, ache in the back of democracy to being a retrovirus that is killing this country is people like George Stephanopoulos, who kept putting Newt Gingrich on the air, yep. knowing what he was, knowing yep. what he was saying, knowing that he, that this message is absolutely corrosive. People like David Gregory, who would put him on fucking week after week. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and and then Newt Gingrich would go out and say something horrible. And a couple of months later or a month later, almost exactly a month later, he'd be right back on the air. And, and David Gregory would never ask him anything, never ask him a single well, question. Well, because Newt Gingrich's job is to fill 30 minutes, not to be – Honest or truthful or help America in any way. That's not the purpose of television Sunday shows. And that's right? that's that's the point that I think we want to underscore. We do it a lot, but uh, definitely underscore it this week is what you are seeing when you mm-hmm. open the newspaper or watching television mm-hmm. is not journalism. Right. You are watching a performance. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of there is a lot of journalism in there. There's a lot of truth in, in my local daily newspaper. There's a lot of truth in The New York Times. I'm not going to deny any of that. But what you are watching when you see the Sunday shows, when you when you read the op-ed pages, when you listen to the radio, is a performance. What I, what I was tweeting today that, you know what? In bad 80s porn, the pizza and cable guys aren't really pizza and well, cable guys. Well, and this, I, I did want – actually, this was what I put to the side because I wanted to ask you about this. Yeah. Specifically, Tommy Laren because yeah. you had a lot to say. Yes. I had responded to someone uh-huh. talking about – Tommy Laren, she, she, I don't know where she got this picture. She, maybe she's teaching herself Photoshop, but the, it, 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 it was another one where liberals 
Twitter is scratching their heads. What did she just put up? And it was food for thought. <laughs> and it was Kaepernick taking a knee in the boat that was leading to D-Day and the, yeah. the suicide boat that where the flap comes down and people walk out of the water and there's Colin Kaepernick in the boat on like, his knee. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, first of all, everyone, a lot of people pointed out, including me, um, Black people weren't allowed on those boats if it was a white <laughs> Sorry, dude. unit. There yeah. was a, they were segregated. Oh, and, that's right. yeah. uh, and of course, you know, Kaepernick isn't being unpatriotic. He's no. trying to fix something that's wrong right. in this country, which is an actually very patriotic thing to do. If you feel like liberals do, that fixing America means loving America. Okay. Well, and that, so, that led to but, that... Inter- yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so that led to this discussion of that you that you brought up, which is, is she really that stupid? Is she was, really that stupid? Is she really that stupid? Right? And, and my response was in bad eighties porn, <laughs> the cable guy and the pizza guy in real life are not cable guys or pizza guys. Mm-hmm. They're porn act. She's a porn actress. Yes, she is. This is hardcore wing nut jerk off porn for old bitter white racists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. all it is. That's all Fox mm-hmm. News is. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. 24 hour a day, soft core and hardcore pornography, mm-hmm. occasionally interrupted with 10 minutes of actual news um, for bitter old white bigots. Mm-hmm. And and radio uh, that hate radio, the same thing. All por- pornography. Therefore, so the rules of pornography apply, mm-hmm. which means it doesn't matter what she knows or doesn't know. Um, I forget who the um, the crotch couch person was who left that show, and we discovered, of course, that she's a concert violinist um, on Fox News. It yeah. doesn't matter what she knows or doesn't know. It doesn't matter how well-educated she is. It doesn't matter um, whether she's qualified or literate or whatever. She's playing the part of a dumb, blonde Fox fuck mm-hmm. toy mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. for the amusement of the assholes who watch Fox and that's the job she's performing. She's delivering pizza. Hi, pizza. Is anyone here to order a pizza? I'm sorry. I can't have any money. I can't pay. Well, you can find another pay- way to pay me. Just hate liberals. Oh, let's hate liberals together. Yeah, baby. That feels great. That's all she does. That's her function. Yeah. And she's taken that job at Fox to do that thing. Everyone who works there in mm-hmm. front of the camera or behind it knows exactly what they're doing. They're, well, they, and you're ta- you were talking about Gretchen Carlson. That's who you were talking that's about. Right. And that she was she was a very well-educated concert violinist who yes. had a good education, and yet she would sit on her show and go, I just Googled the word czar. Oh, and- <laughs> oh something. I didn't even know it. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because the average Fox News old, bitter, white, bigoted asshole doesn't want to hear a smart woman discuss things smartly. Right. They want to see a dumb blonde in a blonde miniskirt sitting between two guys. Either one of which could have been me. They could have been me on that couch. My I could lucky be, guy. Oh yeah. I could do see. I could do that job and and jerk it to what's going on and and get their political message, get their political fix through a pornographic medium. That's right. that's what she provides. And the problem is that it's become an addiction. Yeah, and ninety eight percent of them are blonde and like I mean, there is a Roger Ailes type yeah. on that network, uh, and it is on purpose, and it is because and and the makeup department there is instructed on, and the wardrobe department, and the shoe department, <laughs> there and and you've said this many times that what kind of person dresses up and says what the client wants to hear. Right. That's right. the interaction. The interaction is I will pay you with my attention, with my free, uh, with mm-hmm. my patronizing your advertisers, mm-hmm. with my vote in exchange for something. And the exchange is you'll get dressed up in a costume of his designed to make me happy mm-hmm. and titillate me. And you will tell me what a fucking patriot I am, how well hung I am from a patriotic point of view. Oh, your patriotism is so huge. Oh, my God. I've never seen such a big flag in my whole life. You're such a stud. Oh, my God. That's their job. And and the problem is, again, it became addictive. It became something they had to have. It became something that they couldn't walk back. I mean, the porn stash these people have over the last 20 years is gigantic. Mm-hmm. And they're sitting on a big pile of sticky, dog-eared, filthy old magazines mm-hmm. trying to pretend that what they're really doing is arguing politics. Where they're, yeah. What they're doing is they're arguing to protect their addiction. And yeah. the first yeah. step is... You have to hit bottom and admit you have a problem. And that's never going to happen. There's so many enablers with lots and lots of money right. to help keep them addicted. Yep. Right. 
Yeah. And, and their attention, and while they're not watching, um, and while they're, and the, the counterpart to the Fox News program, programming and the hate radio programming is both siderisms. Yeah. Because every 20 minutes, some liberals at their door, are like mom, going, what are you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they're caught. I mean, every, they're, yeah. they, these these idiots. I mean, I I get email from morons every day who are comp- who who are debunkable and easily debunked. This is why debunking them online is a complete waste of time mm-hmm. because it doesn't work. That's just mom pounding on the door, going, "What are you doing in there?" and flying the door open. And what do they do every time? Do they do they give up their habit? Do they say, "I'm sitting in here jerking off, ma"? No, mm-hmm. they say, "Liberals do it too." You know what? Everybody else does it. Both sides do it. Why are you getting mad at me? I'm just doing what I do. That's why both siderism is the is the greater and more toxic and more destructive lie because the people who practice it know what they're doing. Yeah, they're they're the ones who are a secondary market for the wingnut porn addicts because they need an alibi. They need an excuse because they get caught every day and their excuse is always the same, which is everyone does it. Everyone's equally bad. Both sides are equally terrible. Why should I stop doing it when liberals are doing the same thing? Yeah. And, that's- and, and there there are rare opportunities where the facade that I'm not an addict right. <laughs> uh, come out. I was thinking of two, 2012 mm-hmm. when Fox News for three days swore up and down that Romney was going to win in a landslide. Yeah. And then he lost. And yeah. you couldn't deny that Fox News had been lying to them for three days. And uh, I think we're at... We're sort of at that moment now, particularly um, with Flynn flipping yesterday. Yep. yep. Even though well. it's Thanksgiving week and, and all kinds of things are happening this week uh, at a time when we're not supposed to be paying attention. And it's really important to con- – I think we're, we are all now at the point where we realize, no, you cannot drop your attention from this president for five no. seconds. No. Uh and from this administration and from this Congress, uh, the um, the flipping of Michael Flynn is something that I think they're going to have to make a visible adjustment. Uh, and, and I've already seen that the, the Fox News babes are mm-hmm. already saying, well, you know, he wasn't telling the truth in December. We all knew that. Right. We yep. all were talking about that back in Chris last Christmas. We were talking about how Michael Flynn wasn't that honest, you know. And got to watch out. And, of course, they're rewriting their own history right. and rewriting, you know, that that wasn't the case at all. But uh, they're going to re- – that's how they're going to try to handle it. And right. I have heard from people who have who are this week in in the homes <laughs> of the wingnut uh, cabal and, and the addict and, and sitting there at the table pretending that we can just make pancakes for breakfast and mm-hmm. not – not think that, uh, you know, Uncle Fred voted with the Klan proudly right. over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, th- some of them are saying, yeah, it's kind of quiet. This yeah. year, this year, it's kind of quiet. Last year, it was election year, and there was crowing about Donald Trump uh yeah, uh, might not win, but he was right, and he was going to do this. And this year, it's well, you know, let's talk about football or let's do something else because well, this this year, Uncle, uh, you know, the the year. wall's not built. We haven't repealed Obamacare. He's a failure. This year, Crazy Uncle Liberty, yeah, is pawing through his porn stash <laughs> for some vintage two thousand eight, two thousand nine, yeah, two thousand ten, yeah. um, uh, Gadsden flag. Yep. Tea party porn. Exactly. exactly. You know, I, oh, 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 look what I found. Oh, this one's really good. This is where I'm an independent. And I've never heard I'm of George I'm a constitutional Bush. conservative. Yeah. Yep. If, if you squint your eyes, you can you can just pretend that you you weren't a Trump supporter either. Yeah, exactly. And that's and what that, that lifeboat is being built for everyone on right the right right now front, by very wealthy people right in front of our eyes. Right in front of our very – and this is the thing that kills me. I've said this before. That's we need to burn the lifeboats it, wherever possible. It yeah. kills me to, to listen to – and this is part of the tremendously liberating uh, and often um, incredibly frustrating part of being completely outside any organized structure. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not on the Stephanie Miller show. Yeah, on the crooked media universe. He's feeling very. He's feeling very sorry for himself this, t- today. I think. I, I, I'm just. I'm just there. drunk. I'm just. You know. Don't, don't <laughs> mind me. But part of, part of the liberation is we we can say things they can't. Yeah. And yeah. so when I listen to and I I, I, I like Stephanie Miller. Because blockers don't care. No, clock blockers don't care. <laughs> we'll tell you. We'll tell you those things look goddamn ugly on your feet. Quit wearing those goddamn things. 
slip on a nice pair of Dukakis khakis. Dukakis khakis, seasonally appropriate, sensible wear for senseless times. So, so you listen to Stephanie Miller, and she was doing it again this week, and and it, it is part of this. I'm part of an organization. I'm part of a media structure. There's certain things I need to do. There's certain people mm-hmm. I need to please. Mm-hmm. There's certain mm-hmm. you know, th- mm-hmm. there's certain candles I have votive candles I have to light. So I can have Joe Scarborough on my show, and a half an hour later, I can be bitching about how utterly dishonest and reckless it is to walk around all day saying both sides do it. Mm-hmm. And I, I can I can say both of those things, and I'm not going to get any shit for it because, frankly, there's no other media outlet like me out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it is, but but my tiny voiced message to this person who has a very large platform and earned every bit of it is please for fuck's sake stop doing that mm-hmm. stop doing all you're doing is 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 nailing your own coffin shut the people who have normalized charlie sykes and and rick Joe wilson Scarborough and rick wilson and who, who think that bill crystal is a fucking genius yep are are sealing their own doom are absent because these people are not on your side they're not on your side. They're well, not Rick, Rick Wilson has a thread today, Drift Glass, this afternoon, mm-hmm. about just wait until all these MAGA types figure out that Flynn is going to uh, open this case wide open uh-huh. and the whole Trump family is going down. Boy, those MAGA types are really going to yep. uh, eat some crow. Yep. And I I wrote back, and I, I'm sorry I didn't link you back or link you or tag you or anything i just huh? said you've forgotten all about dick army's bush off machine right. really no one here knows that that exists no they're going to take that out of mothballs as quick as they can they're already you know putting in a new carburetor on that thing and, and figuring well, that... out how to be constitutional conservatives yep that leads us yep. back to the only two notes we have um well yeah i want to so... i want to read this um i'm gonna i've got actual newsprint let me shake it here she, you hear she... that this is this is production value, people. Tree killing. Tree she killing. went. She went all the way to Peoria, Illinois. I, I went through Peoria to get to Augustana College mm-hmm. and uh, stopped in a uh, coffee shop, and uh, they had a stack of old newspapers there that people had put set aside, to, including this is last Saturday's paper. What? Uh, I, what Blue Gal's trying to say is all of this is deductible as business expense. Right. All of this is my whole trip is deductible now as a business expense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's not. No. Um, but this is – I love reading letters to the editor yes. from various places and finding out what the zeitgeist of the community is. Yes. Uh, this one has uh, three – four letters to the editor. One of them, I can't tell whether this person – I literally can't tell if this person is a liberal or a conservative because uh, it's a one-sentence letter that says, would someone please explain to me why every time there's a tax cut, my taxes go up? <laughs> You know, which makes sense. All right. Uh, that's fun. That's a funny one liner. But the other three letters uh, just floored me. Um, the headline of the bottom letter is longtime welfare recipients should not have the right to vote. Sure. <laughs> this the uh, number two letter is fewer mass shootings. Not worth the trade off. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's impressive. I'm not making this up, folks. This is the Peoria <laughs> Journal Star for Saturday, November 18th. Fewer mass shootings, not worth the trade off. Mm-hmm. And it is such a, uh, first of all, it's the, the, I should show this to Junior Dude because he's taking a logic class now. Um, the error of all or nothing thinking and the whataboutism, which is, well, uh, 22,000 die from non alcohol traffic fatalities. Why don't we work on that? Right. <laughs> Right. What about that? No, huh? we're not doing anything about traffic fatalities. What in about America. schistosomiasis? You get that from walking barefoot through trenches. You know that. <laughs> Why don't you care about people who are sick from schistosomiasis, Blue Gal? <laughs> yeah, I got your schistosomiasis right here, pal. Right here. Right mm-hmm. here in my pants. Yep. Yep. But uh, the number one letter, folks, counting up. Oh, my gosh. This When I saw this, I thought, oh, this is so podcastable. I must put this in my knitting bag and bring it home to Springfield. Uh, since her name is in the paper, I'm going to read it. Her name is Rosemary Gardner. She lives in Peoria. Uh, she's a retired product manager. And the title of her, the headline they put on her letter is, Rauner Not Very Republican. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Rauner is our Republican governor. Yeah, very, and very Republican. he is failing. He is running for re-election in 2018. Yes. Uh, he is responsible for the fact that Illinois went without a budget for two years. Yes, he is responsible for the fact that our economy here is in the toilet. Uh, 
people are leaving the state because of mismanagement. I mean, he he wanted to destroy public unions uh, the way Scott Walker did. He's one of those. Scott Walker, he's got his own billions to spend on his own campaign. Mm -hmm. He bought out the Republican Party of Illinois, uh, funded the reelection campaigns of every single state senator with an R after their name so that they all own him or he owns all of them. Uh, I could go on, but uh, (laughs) this Republican woman, clearly, Mm -hmm. uh, because Bruce Rauner is going down. I'm just going to say he's going down. Right. Very unpopular. Uh, this is this is going to be a wave election, and there is no doubt in my mind that Bruce Rauner is going to lose uh, next year's re-election campaign. You know why? Uh, both sides? He didn't embrace Trump. He didn't embrace Trumpism. He didn't, oh, he didn't embrace Trumpism. Yeah, he, yeah he needs okay. To, he needs to embrace it. He needs to mm-hmm. grab it hard, mm-hmm. honey. Mm-hmm. He, needs to, he needs to embrace it with all of his bodily strength, all of his upper body mm-hmm. strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he needs to. Well, uh this this lady uh, feels that um, Rauner her last her last paragraph starts with Rauner seems to be a man without a party but if he must pick one it should be Democrats yeah <laughs> because yeah. he's going to lose re-election so he must be a she Democrat. doesn't want him to be in her party <laughs> right, right. well you so know obviously... I, I did tweet a picture of that and just said you know the lifeboat doesn't work at the gubernatorial le- no, level either. <laughs> it really doesn't. It really yeah, there there really isn't a way around it. And this that is, there's such a clear that was to me was such a clear example though of the lifeboat. Oh like, yeah, just blatant. But he's not, and that's what's going to happen is, and you we saw it. Right. Wasn't there that We're period watching. where Joe Scarborough was going on and on and on about Trump is a Democrat. Trump oh, yeah. is a Democrat. No, no. Democrat. 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 He's been a Democrat. He's a Democrat. He's yeah. always been and a Democrat. We're going to hear that Democrat. again. You, Those ideas I are Democrat ideas. You. Yep. I guarantee you. And then, you know, as Trump quits. fails, we're going to see this is the failure of the system. Right. Or this is the, you know, he failed because he wouldn't work with the Republican Congress. Right. Or, I mean, there will be a billion and one excuses for why the Republican voter is not responsible for Donald Trump's election. Well, because the Republican the, the voter can never be responsible because no, exactly. the customer is always right. You can't right. go around right. telling Republicans right. that they're responsible for shit. Right. The party of personal responsibility has made a trademark of never ever ever taking responsibility and that again that's that's a personal decision. But mm-hmm. they have been wrapped around by this thick layer of conservative media and centrist both siderist media yeah. who agree that they w- those people are never going to be held responsible for anything. Whatever alibi they come up with, whatever excuse they have, uh, we're going to lean into it because those people will also buy our reverse mortgages yeah. and our dick pills our and our Cialis pills, yep. and yep. whatever else we're selling. So we can't yeah. go around telling the world that the problem with America is crazy Uncle Liberty. That's what's wrong with this country. We have to come up with an alternate theory of what's broken in our country, even though it is self-evident – to anyone over the age of 10 that the problem is one half of our political system has gone completely fucking mental. Mm -hmm. But we can't say that. So we come up with these long, um, Rococo, um, weird explanations that that then we have to stick with. And they get weirder and weirder and more divergent from reality. And then we have to invent a reason why nothing we say matches the real world. And what makes it possible to do that is controlling the cameras and the microphones and the newspapers. Right. You, you right. only let people in the club who are willing to say the shit that you want to keep saying to keep your your fucking shit in tight. Yep. And so, if I may proceed with a little bit of dick. yeah, this is this is uh, Drift Glass's uh, David Brooks rant for you, and yeah. I'm glad you're going to do it because today he made me mad. Yeah. I did go over and look at his column. Yeah. It is so ahistorical. It's so despicable. It's so just, fucking just ridiculous how how he is now lying about Lincoln. Yeah, literally. Well, I, well it, it, it's an entire column about the Redeemer nation mm-hmm. and how we're all fallen and we should all be humble. And a typical, you know, as I as I refer to it, the typical David Brooks pseudo rabbinical argle bargle that, you know, <laughs> we're all sinners. We're we all you know, the God is not a tribal God. And, and, and Lincoln and now I'm quoting him. Lincoln fought any sense of self-righteous superiority the northerners might harbor, which is fine. Uh, I agree. Lincoln wanted to unite the nation. But David Brooks specifically goes to the second inaugural, which is, again, one of the great works of literature and one of the great speeches in in world history. It's absolutely spectacular. I mean, you know, I I think Lincoln's writing is 
sublime. Uh, but he he takes a fucking machete to this beautiful piece of writing, this beautiful, elegant, well-constructed piece of thinking and writing designed for the ages and hacks out a big fucking chunk of it because it doesn't fit his both sides bullshit. This right. is a speech given as the war is being uh, won by Lincoln. This is a speech that is being delivered to a nation that has endured four years of bloody civil war. And the only reason this war is coming to an end is because Lincoln and his generals, Lincoln dispatched his generals to the south to burn them to the fucking ground. He, exactly. He, he burned their cities. He burned their crops. 400,000, I believe, Union soldiers died. Bloodiest conflicts, you know, in American history. Um, none of that is in David Brooks's remembering of, of, mm -hmm. of what happened. Yeah. It's just... There was the speech is a great it, it, David Brooks says the speech is a great reconciling speech. The words recurring throughout are we and all. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the ellipses <laughs> in this sentence. I usually don't do that. I, I would do this with a chalkboard and, a pen, and my Glenn Beck glasses if I could. But I want you to pay very close attention to the ellipses and how he butchers this. He butchers Lincoln's words to make them fit his stupid fucking cult mm -hmm. ideology. Mm -hmm. And here's here's what he says about, he's, now he's quoting the second inaugural. Quote, all thoughts were anxiously directed to an impending civil war. All dreaded it. All sought to avert it. Ellipses. Both parties deprecated war. Now, here's what Lincoln actually said. Mm -hmm. All dreaded it. All sought to avert it. While the inaugural address was being delivered from this place, devoting, devoted altogether to saving the Union without war, insurgent agents were in the city seeking to destroy it without war, seeking to dissolve the Union and divide, it, div divide effects by negotiation. Both parties, both parties deprecated war, and this is where the ellipses come in, mm -hmm. but one of them would make war rather than let the nation survive, and the other would accept war rather than let it perish, and the war came. There were two yep. sides to the Civil War. One was right, one was wrong. And Lincoln chose which side to be on. There's no fucking, there, there are no, there's no pair of legs, there's no yoga exercise in the universe that will, that will make your legs flexible enough to straddle this fucking speech with an ideology of, you know, both sides do it. Really, it's Except not. he can put an ellipsis in and edit right. Lincoln. Right. Edit Lincoln's famous speech right. to fit his agenda. And and yeah. and David Brooks has no this is this is really interesting for those of you out there who care about this and are still listening and god why are you it's there's <laughs> stuff on TV. We love you too. We please. Love, we we love, love you right back. <laughs> David Brooks has no professional credentials at all. He's not a he didn't major in journalism, he didn't major in sociology, he didn't major in psychology or philosophy, David Brooks has one fucking degree to his name. Now, I do too, so I'm not going to fault him for that, but his degree is a BS in history mm -hmm. from the University of Chicago. And this Well, he's er, he's shown his BS in history, he's all right. I'm like, oh. Now, this is a day when Tom, I have that degree too, by the way. Yeah. I do. I have that yes. same degree. But and I, my wife doesn't usually get lit up by... I would get an F if I put an ellipses in <laughs> Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural and just left out part because it didn't fit my thesis. Well, and there's this whole long... I mean, the rest of it is about how slavery must end. And yeah, if it takes, yeah. if we just, if we have to, if every, um, if, if all the, if God wills it um, until all the wealth piled up by the bondsman, 250 years of unrequited toil shall be sunk and every drop of blood drawn with the lash shall be paid by another drawn with the sword. Mm -hmm. He's very clear about this must end. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we must end it. And whatever and it's the It's not going to be compromised, is, right. What, and once it's over, once this horrible institution is destroyed, we can reconcile. But we cannot reconcile as long as this institution remains intact. The institution today that most accurately reflects the Southerner's view of the universe and is most pernicious and destructive of this country is Mr. David Brooks's Republican Party. Exactly. I've said this before. We cannot remain... <laughs> Half, half box and half box free. And, half free. And, and it is astonishing to me. And, and this is on the same day when the, the same New York Times wrote a puff piece celebrating Ben Shapiro <laughs> and gave Tom Friedman a freedom to write yet another suck on this. Hey, look, there's a Middle East tyrant I can love um, editorial. And everyone's just sort of looking at each other going, 
why the fuck do these people have jobs? Mm -hmm. And that's what's Mm -hmm. so fascinating about this to me. Not just that David Brooks is a congenital liar. He does this on purpose. He does it for effect. He does it because the last place he has left to hide from the righteous goddamn judgment of history is the high and holy church of both sides do it. And if that's yeah. if that edifice falls, David Brooks yeah. falls and all the rest of them fall with him. And the right falls yeah. too, because it can't survive yeah. without that alibi. Right. And so he's right. hiding out in this and that means he, he he has two choices. Face the fact that it's the Republicans stupid. Mm-hmm. And it's only them at this moment in history. It happens to be only them. They have to go or take out the second inaugural, take a knife out and cut the heart out of it and pretend mm-hmm. that that's history. And David Brooks yep. chose to do the latter as a fucking journalist working for the fucking New York Times. Mm-hmm. That's what. And, and so the question then becomes a larger one, which is why does David Brooks have a job? Mm-hmm. Why does Tom Friedman have a job? And. Since the New York Times editors, and this David Brooks has been working with the New York Times for 14 years now, yeah. write shit like this twice a week, writing shit this bad or slightly less bad, but but equally awful in its own in its own uh, uh, in its own universe in its own way mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. decades. Yep. And the question becomes over and over again, not just why does David Brooks suck as a writer and why is he such a terrible person, but why is he paid to be this way? Why is he on NPR and PBS and Meet the Press and in the New York Times? And why is he lecturing? Who the fuck is his clout? Who the fuck makes it impossible to fire people like David Brooks? What, where's the dead hooker in his trunk? I, I mean, really, he has some sort of blackmail thing going on. But they all do. Uh, Tom Friedman yeah, does. And, yeah, and Maureen yeah. Dowd does. Yeah. And Joe Scarborough does. And and once you start adding up the number of people who have absolutely no business having a microphone or a typewriter in front of them and a massive national audience who are who are being given that every day by executive decision, you yeah. realize, oh, this is this is so bad yep. that this has to go. The, those agents who were loose in Washington trying to wreck the union by negotiation, David Brooks is one of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's part of the problem, and he has to be swept out with the rest of the trash. And I'm going to apologize to our listeners to cut you off because uh, you someone go. needs a ride. Yeah, go. so we're going to we're going to get going. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Tucker, a.k.a. Lover. He's a long-haired sweetheart of a cat who loves to be loved. Please go visit him at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Where you can also write to both of us, feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline or uh, whatever else you pay by the month on the internet for. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you charge something, somebody mentioned to me this week that Hulu is actually $7.99 a month. So if you can afford Hulu or coffee, or whatever that small amount is for yourself, uh, send the same amount to us, please. How much do you pay for porn, people? How much do you pay for porn? (laughs) How much do you pay for porn? Nobody pays for porn. That's true. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link. If your alternative is a big box store, you can get Christmas gift wrap and Christmas cards at Amazon and not buy them from the big box store. Uh, And do it with our link, and we get uh, a portion of that with the no war on Christmas is on you. people. The war on Christmas <laughs> is on. It's now time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxways.biz foxwise.biz. Check out our website to see how great these, uh, this jewelry looks. The one we're giving away says resist and has f- snowflakes on either side, along with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. They will customize things for you at foxwise.biz. We're running this contest as a way of saying thank you to our donors. Our winner this week is Ms. MR from Wisconsin. Woo-hoo. She will be receiving a cuff bracelet and a $10 gift card to Donors Choose so that she can donate to a school in her area or a classroom that is looking for help in an area that she supports. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties deeply hope Malia Obama gets some better friends. And while the Internet Kitties don't swear very often, fuck you, Daily Caller.
Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the flower and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.